Your Classical Storytime is supported by the Minnesota College Savings Plan, the official 529 program for the state of Minnesota. Learn how you can invest for your child's college education and minimize your taxes at mnsaves.org. Welcome to Your Classical Storytime from American Public Media. I'm Valerie with our version of The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, there was a powerful magician, a sorcerer. He lived in a kind of castle, a big thing made of stone, high on a forest-covered hill. At the bottom of the hill, a lively stream with fresh, cold water. All around the castle, through the forest and along the stream, were plants and herbs and berries and roots. Some were for eating, and others were for potion making. The magician was quite old, and he didn't have any children, but he wanted to make sure that all his spells and potions would be passed on to the next generation. Also, to be honest, he was getting a little tired of chopping firewood, fetching water, and gathering ingredients. So he decided to take on an apprentice, someone he could teach and train and boss around. He found a young boy from the village to help him, Georgie. Georgie learned very quickly that sorcerers use a lot of ingredients. He walked miles and miles every single day, sticking his arms into bramble bushes to pluck the berries, digging by hand into the soft earth by the stream for a certain kind of worm, pulling leaves and scraping bark and unearthing roots. He figured he'd never get the dirt out from under his nails. He was covered with scratches, and he had some kind of rash. But collecting ingredients was nothing compared to how much water was needed. There was a big container in the kitchen for drinking and cooking, plus an enormous tub for the wizard's daily bath, and finally a huge barrel for spells only in the cellar workshop. All of these had to be filled every day by Georgie. He would take a bucket in each hand and run all the way down the hill to the stream, fill the buckets, and then walk back up the hill much more slowly. Buckets of water are heavy. In between all this hard work, the sorcerer was also teaching Georgie every day how to dry the bramble berries over the fire without scorching them. Oops. How to grind seeds and boil leaves. How to follow a recipe. Measure carefully, combine ingredients in just the right order, cook at precisely the right temperature. Simmer, shake, stir, strain, then into a bottle with a label and a cork. Georgie loved learning to make potions, but what he really wanted to know was how to use his voice to cast a spell. He begged the wizard to teach him, but was always answered with a laugh. Ha, ah, you are still too young and far too ignorant to learn such powerful magic. Maybe next year, kid. So Georgie continued his hard work, chopping, sweeping, fetching, mixing, cleaning, learning. And the next year he asked again, Teach me how to recite spells. Again, the wizard laughed. Ha! Not a chance. You have much more to learn. Maybe next year. And so it went, year after year. Georgie learned more and more. He worked harder and harder. But still, the sorcerer would not share the secret of casting a spell with his voice. Finally, Georgie decided he would take matters into his own hands. After supper, instead of going to bed, he hid inside a cupboard down in the cellar where the wizard did all his work. He waited for the wizard to come downstairs and begin his nighttime magic. It was a bad night for the sorcerer. <laughs> he was trying to create a new potion for a customer who needed to get rid of garden gnomes. 
He was testing it on the gnome from his own garden, but he couldn't get it quite right. I've tried alligator extract, worm toenails, pumpkin spice. Nothing's working. Uh, What about amnesia seeds? Now let me see here. Uh, A little of this, a little of that. A sousson of this beauty. Yes, yes. What's this? I'm out of water? George, Georgie, where is that kid? That kid was hiding in a cupboard, holding his breath. Uh, Worthless lad. And then it happened. Georgie peered out through a crack in the door to see the sorcerer draw himself up tall and take a deep breath. Come, old broomstick, heed my commands. Now have legs and arms and hands. Take these buckets to the river Fill them both, and then deliver. Georgie could not believe his eyes. The broom, which had been leaning against the wall in a very broom-like and armless way, sprouted a dang pair of arms, and also legs, which it used to walk to the empty water tub and grab the two buckets. It swept by the cupboard where Georgie was hiding, up the stairs and out the door. Meanwhile, while the wizard was intently focused on reviving the gnome for another round of tests, Georgie crept silently out of the room and snuck off to bed. The next morning, the sorcerer, having finally perfected his gnome repellent, headed off to the neighboring village to deliver it to his customer. He told Georgie he'd be gone until nightfall and to clean up that mess in the cellar. Georgie went down and washed the hundred or so vials and jars and beakers the wizard had dirtied in his many experiments. And then, for what felt like hours, he swept. He swept up amnesia crumbs and alligator shrapnel, broken glass and pixie dust. Finally, it was time to scrub the filthy floor. Georgie trudged over to the barrel to fill up his mop bucket. Oh, man, it's empty, he whined, imagining a hundred trips to the stream and back. But wait, he turned to look at the broom he'd just been using. Now's my chance. He drew himself up as tall as he could and took a deep breath. Come, old broomstick, heed my commands. Now have legs and arms and hands. Take these buckets to the river, fill them both, and then deliver. And pop, 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 pop. The broom sprouted arms and legs, grabbed the buckets, and trotted off to fetch water. Georgie was so delighted. He made himself a sandwich and put his feet up on the table to watch the broom haul water. He started daydreaming about all the things he could do now that he knew the secret. And I guess he fell asleep because the next thing he knew, he was wide awake and up to his neck in water. The broom, the broom was still fetching water. It had filled the huge barrel which had overflowed and then filled the entire cellar. Georgie yelled, broom, stop fetching water. The broom did not even skip a beat. Water, 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 water. Oh no, said Georgie. I didn't learn the spell to make the broom stop. This was a big problem. I know it has to rhyme, he thought. So maybe I can just modify the first one? Here goes. Come, old broomstick, heed my commands. Don't have legs or arms or hands. Ugh, no. Hey, you broom man, put those pails down. Stop your fetching, lest these snails drown. Not surprisingly, not effective. Georgie was in a complete panic. OK, 
Okay, I'll just take this axe and chop the broom into pieces. That ought to do it. Georgie looked at the pile of sticks and straw that used to be a broom and buckets and breathed a sigh of relief. But then... What's that? A twitch of movement. Then another. Then, to Georgie's horror, an explosion of movement. Each scrap of wood, from the biggest chunks down to the tiniest fragments, each one sprang up into a full-size broom, sprouting arms and legs, each one carrying its own two buckets. Georgie had created an entire army of water-carrying brooms who continued their relentless work. All the wizard's supplies and ingredients were underwater. His precious recipe books. The small wooden work table and chairs were floating. Even the enormous wooden barrel was adrift. Georgie was treading water in the middle of the room, trying to figure out how to empty the cellar when the barrel, propelled by the latest delivery forcefully flung by the broom army, bonked him right in the head and knocked him out cold. He sank under the water. (laughs) Things were not looking good for our Georgie. But then a large hand grabbed him by the back of his shirt and yanked him out of the water. Georgie awoke to find himself suspended in midair, nose to nose with an extremely angry wizard. The sorcerer held Georgie with one hand, and with the other he snapped his fingers and mumbled a few words under his breath. The water was gone, the room was dry, everything was back in its place. And the bucket-carrying broom army? It was once again a single, very ordinary broom, leaning innocently against the wall. The sorcerer looked at Georgie sternly, but also with affection. He was very glad he'd arrived in time to save his apprentice from drowning. He talked to Georgie for a long time about how important it was to combine knowledge with experience and patience. They stayed up till sunrise, talking about what Georgie had learned from his terrifying ordeal. And then the wizard said, not unkindly, Now off to bed with you, my lad, but first fill the water barrel in the cellar by hand. The End Thanks for listening to Your Classical Storytime from APM, American Public Media.